In this video, we're going to discuss intermolecular hydrogen abstraction by photo-excited ketones. The basic idea of this reaction is that excited ketones, particularly the half-filled in orbitals of excited ketones, can abstract hydrogens, very often CH hydrogens, to form ketal radicals. And these ketal radicals can go on and couple with each other and do some other processes that amount to photoreduction of the ketone to an alcohol of some kind. We'll look at the basic mechanism for this process, the excited states involved, and some of the interesting aspects associated with electronics. For example, when electron transfer occurs in the course of these mechanisms versus neutral hydrogen transfer. So we can start with the observation that when we excite a ketone to its n pi star state, either the singlet or triplet, can abstract hydrogen from alcohols to form alpha hydroxy radicals. And there are other hydrogen donors that can act in these reactions, but we're going to focus our attention on alcohols to start. This is a primary process that we've actually already seen, and the key primary process is this interaction between the filled sigma CH orbital of the hydrogen donor and the half-filled N orbital in the N pi star excited state of the carbonyl compound. Radical formation is typically followed by radical coupling, and this may require intersystem crossing if we're starting from a triplet state. Of course, uh, intersystem crossing is not required if we're starting from a singlet state. So for example, when we take a solution of acetone and isopropanol and irradiate such that the acetone becomes photoexcited, hydrogen transfer produces two radicals with the radical center at a carbon linked to a hydroxyl group. These are called ketal radicals. And the ketal radicals can link up to form this product, which has two hydroxyl groups in a 1-2 relationship, a 1-2 or vicinal diol, also known as a penicol. And this compound here is actually the alcohol penicol. After the ketal radicals are formed, we're essentially back on the ground state potential energy surface. And so those radicals can exhibit behavior that's typical of ground state carbon-centered radicals. This can lead to some interesting outcomes. An interesting example comes from this Pitts paper way back in 1959, where they took benzophenone rather than acetone and irradiated it in the presence of isopropanol. An interesting result was obtained. Rather than the expected hydrogen transfer from the carbon of isopropanol in the formation of kind of a mixed diol with phenyl rings on one side and methyls on the other, they observed exclusively this compound, which is benzpenicol from the coupling of two ketal radicals derived from benzophenone. This would seem to suggest that either two benzophenone ketal radicals were being generated by two excitations and hydrogen transfers followed by coupling, or something else is going on, and that first proposal seems unlikely since two excited benzophenones would have to find each other very rapidly. In the proposed mechanism, benzophenone first abstracts a hydrogen from the solvent isopropyl alcohol, and the hydrogen abstraction happens at the carbon link to the hydroxyl group rather than the OH group because the CH bond is more easily broken homolytically than the OH bond. That's a general idea worth keeping in mind that when alcohols act as hydrogen donors, they do so from CH adjacent to the OH group, not OH. And after that, we get the expected benzophenone ketal radical. We also obtain a ketal, ketal radical derived from isopropyl alcohol. And this ground state radical can transfer a hydrogen to a ground state molecule of benzophenone to generate another benzophenone ketal radical. So when these combine in a hydrogen transfer process, we can end up with another molecule of benzophenone ketal radical as well as acetone, which I'm just going to abbreviate as Me2CO here in the corner of the slide. And so now we can see that the combination of these two benzophenone ketal radicals is going to give rise to the product through radical-radical coupling. And so this reactivity hinges on this isopropyl ketal radical engaging with ground state benzophenone to form a more stable radical derived from benzophenone. The key general idea here is that radical stability can drive processes secondary processes that lead to sometimes unexpected radicals. The general mechanism of hydrogen abstraction starts, of course, with photoexcitation of the ketone to its excited singlet state. Rapid intersystem crossing takes place in certain classes of ketones. Think back to our look at exemplary state diagrams of ketones in a previous video. This can sometimes be more rapid than photochemical reaction, depending on the structure of the ketone. The next step is then the 
hydrogen atom transfer via that key sigma CH to N orbital interaction. And in this case, this leads to two identical ketal radicals. This can happen either in a triplet fashion or from the excited singlet state. Again, depending on the structure of the ketone, for acetone, it's going to involve the singlet state predominantly, although for diaryl and other more delocalized ketones, triplets may become involved. And notice the spin state here is going to depend on the spin state of the excited state that we started from, either singlet or triplet. If we're in a singlet state, Radical-radical coupling, what I'm labeling here as end-to-end -end orbital interaction, can take us directly to the penicol product. If we're in a triplet state, then we need to do intersystem crossing before that coupling can take place. And for the radical pair, intersystem crossing tends to be more rapid than, say, the excited state because the electrons are farther apart in space. Notice here also that the overall process amounts to a reduction of the ketone since we're starting with a carbon-oxygen pi bond that is replaced with a carbon-carbon bond in the product. And we've gone from essentially a carbonyl to an alcohol functional group. That's a reduction process. So this is sometimes called photoreduction of ketones via hydrogen donors. Amines are a particularly interesting class of hydrogen donors because they have low ionization potential. They're relatively easy to ionize, and this means that they're good electron donors. So after photoexcitation of the ketone to form its singlet state, there may be an intersystem crossing process to the triplet state. Again, depending on the structure of the ketone and the relative rates of intersystem crossing relative to photochemical reaction. But what's interesting about the amine is that we can see an electron transfer process taking place. And this can happen from either the singlet or the triplet state. And this gives rise to a ketal radical anion and an amine radical cation. A proton transfer from a carbon linked to this amine nitrogen then gives our neutral ketal radical as well as an alpha amino radical. If these two combine in a radical-radical coupling process, we end up with a two-amino alcohol product. On the other hand, if the ketal radicals get together with one another, we end up with the familiar pinacol. And we may also observe radical-radical coupling of the amine radicals with one another to form 1,2-diamines. So this is a bit of a mess, but the important point really is that when we use these amines and other hydrogen donors that have low ionization potential, a tendency to donate electrons, electron transfer can precede the proton transfer process so that the net hydrogen transfer happens through transfer of an electron followed by transfer of a proton. And that proton transfer is happening here from the amine radical cation to the ketal radical anion. And of course, if we end up going through a triplet state, it will be necessary for intersystem crossing to take place before these radical-radical couplings can occur. One interesting observation concerning these reactions is relatively low quantum yield. And this is associated with the reverse processes of what you see. So for example, back electron transfer, getting back to the reactants can be an issue. This is also called reverse or return electron transfer. Just returning us to the ground state of the reactants is an issue, as is reverse hydrogen transfer. You can imagine that if the ketal radical simply returned a hydrogen to the alpha amino radical, we would end up back at starting materials. And so back hydrogen transfer, we might call it BHT, can be an issue in these reactions that limits the quantum yield as well. Keep in mind also that this doesn't mean that the chemical yield is necessarily low. It just means we need to use more light to get this reaction to go. Let's look now at some evidence of electron transfer. The data you see here are the rate constants of quenching for a variety of different ketones with isopropyl alcohol as hydrogen donor and triethylamine as hydrogen donor. We've also tabulated the triplet energies and the configurations of the lowest excited triplet states for each of these ketones. So we'll get to that data in a second. I want to point out some differences between the alcohol and amine rate constants of quenching first to indicate here that this data supports significantly different mechanisms for the alcohol and amine as hydrogen donors. We've already kind of stipulated that as a hypothesis, right? But this provides evidence that the amines in particular are engaging in electron transfer. One thing to notice, which is not clear from the table, but I'll just state 
outright is that amines have a rate constant of quenching of these ketones that is negatively correlated with the ionization potential of the amine. What this means is that the lower the ionization potential of the amine, the faster the rate of quenching. So the better an electron donor the amine is, the faster quenching is, supporting electron transfer as the mechanism of quenching, right? The other thing we notice from this data is whereas the rate constant of quenching decreases pretty systematically as the triplet energy of the ketone decreases. So the reaction becomes less exothermic and the rate constant decreases, consistent with our intuition. The same dependence is not observed when the amine is used as hydrogen donor. The rate constant remains fairly high even for ketones with low triplet energy suggesting that the triplet energy of the ketone is not directly relevant to whatever mechanism quenches that state. And so even the triplet pi pi star state has a high rate of reaction with amines despite generally slow reactions with ROH. And a good example of that is this last case of 2-acetylnaphthalene where the lowest energy triplet state is pi pi star in configuration. Its quenching by isopropyl alcohol is undetectable whereas it still has a reasonably high rate constant of quenching by triethylamine. Again, supporting a qualitative difference in the mechanism of triethylamine relative to isopropyl alcohol. Taken together, all of this provides good evidence that electron transfer is going on when amines are acting as hydrogen donors. This data also reveals some interesting structure reactivity relationships. And the first thing to notice is that in general, n pi star states are considerably more reactive in these hydrogen abstractions than pi pi star states. If we look at the data, we can see that, for example, this compound with a lowest energy pi pi star state is considerably less reactive than the very much related benzophenone, which has the lowest energy n pi star state. We can see this dependence of the reaction rate on the triplet energy. As that triplet energy goes down, the hydrogen transfer process becomes less exothermic and the reaction rate slows. And related to the first point about the configuration of the triplet state, this can be modified, played with, tinkered with, by changing the solvents. Polar solvents tend to stabilize the pi pi star state. And so, for example, when we look at acetophenone being quenched by isopropyl alcohol, the rate constant is quite fast in benzene, where the lowest excited state is n pi star in character. But when we switch to a polar solvent, which destabilizes the n pi star state, stabilizes the pi pi star state so that the lowest excited state is now pi pi star in character, the rate constant is much lower. We've decreased the rate by about a factor of a thousand just via this solvent switch.